in Alaska, I think. That means it's time for some high strategy with me. Uh, I'm playing Bill 64. Today we are once again playing Battletech. So we're going to be continuing the game that we played yet started yesterday. the right game. It doesn't continue the first game I started. It should be the game they play. The game I started with all of you yesterday, I want to say. Yeah, yesterday. I know normally I don't do this many uh, streams in a row, but here we are. I mean, I love playing this game, period. But with y'all, it's extra fun. Because it gets you just talk. I like to hear the sound of my own voice quite a bit. And just ask my partners. Sorry, I'm just sitting here on the begin mission straight screen. I'm busy um, <clears throat> getting in the zone, as it were. So. We begin mission, yes. Command interface initiated. So this is the first mission that really matters in this game. The previous one you just need to complete. There's no consequences for losing a bunch of guys. This one, every hit, every that. bit of damage, every bit of internal damage, every destroyed thing matters. So let's talk a little bit, figure out our next. So we have the blackjack once again. You remember the blackjack? This one's an vindicator. Has a PPC, which is an excellent long-range weapon even if it does generate a lot of heat medium laser a small laser which is a support weapon and a long-range missile so this one snipes but has a couple of things to help them out in case they end up up close DFA the heck is DFA that's from above right they have four jump jets What's up, Fox? This one also can jump. Three jump jets. Um, AC5, also very long range mech for the most part. LRM, all that, and then some standard range weapons just in case you get up close. Commander. And this one's in a spider, yeah. This is a light mech. It's a very good, like, flanker. But it, it, it'll die to anything, so you want to avoid Good to go. big fights. So currently, this is my closest range fighter is the Blackjack. Everybody else here is kind of a sniper. He's got a giant group full of snipers here. So what we're going to do, I think, is we're going to take this valley... and then come up on the turret generator. So I've played this mission before, and the last time I did not do so good. Not so much because I, like, failed at the mission, 
per se. I'm just rotating it so I can keep track of where I'm going. But because I um I lost spite I lost two of my mechs in this mission. So you are going to stay close. Got it. It's gonna stay close. I know you don't want your mechs to get too close all the time. And you're gonna go scout. Aye, aye. Your little spider. What I really want to play with y'all is when I get into mercenary mode because I love games with a managerial aspect like this. Maybe I should do Blood Bowl for y'all uh, when I get tired of this game. I don't know. Probably do Civ 6 or Estelaris, the other one I was thinking. Anyway, um. Yeah, so we want to go this way. We want to keep together this time. Last time when I played, we split up into two groups that tried to attack from both directions, which is usually is good to do maneuvers like that where the enemy does, doesn't know where you're coming from. But I'm realizing that in a base assault kind of situation, we don't really want to flank them because they, if their weapons are potentially spread out, we want to uh, hit them in their weakest spot with everything we've got. Metals and manufacturing property and acting in collusion with a domestic terrorist organization. Cease your advance immediately, or you will be fired upon. <laughs> that sounds like some like asshole who, at like a help desk, like some customer service asshole guy. <laughs> All right, man. If that's how you want to be, we'll play it that way. You want to make this difficult? It'll be difficult. Now, I'm just saying, these guys say you stole from them first, and they may be paying me, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean I'm not I, that I can't be an unbiased witness. That um, I can't be an unbiased witness to the devilry you have been up to. the cat's asking to get in. Oh well. Hmm. Waiting for orders. So we have contact. Can you sensor of course you can't sensor lock. The one thing that this kind of mech is useful is sensor locking and you can't do it. And so the little spider you're gonna run up. But you're not going to engage just yet. You want to spook this guy out. She just hunker down. <coughs> Picked up a blip. Because if we don't want you to engage, we wanted you to find them, but you need to now avoid them until we can uh, get up and, and uh, provide fire support. We'll get some command and view the battlefield here. See, I don't think you should put jump jets so much in a long range mech. Although maybe... Which one... Glitches the who's in the Vindicator? Okay. Because the indicator is the most sniper of these of these mechs. Think glitches in the vindicate? Yes, glitches. In the Waiting for orders. So where can you jump to? Yeah. Now that's the reason for jump jets from the vindicator. Get on top of terrain. In fact, it's a good reason for jump jets, period, is to get on top of terrain. Yeah, you brace. You can't attack anything. You don't have a sensor lock. Order. You. I come around on this side. And try to get him to Moving open up. Out to get an opening up shot. There we go. 
Now this is reason for jump jets. I was not thinking about repositioning very well there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm feeling like a badass right now because I'm just like, oh Enemy shit, jump jets on the sniper, detected. that's why that's a useful thing. Ah, but you got me sensor locked. Mm. They snooped my sniper. Um, but you, oh, but you have all those turrets. See, the problem in this mission is they have those turrets. Getting sensor locked is serious. Now, that base is just covered in sensor locks. Uh, we don't want to get too close to that base. We want to try to draw their mechs out. Good to go. I think you could get a good shot at them with full tip, with full pips. Yeah, we don't want you to be... Yeah. You just run way over there. And hopefully you have an opening to shoot. Yeah, on the commando. You can see the commando. Can you, do we have what we need to do a precision strike? You know, we want to keep it above 50%. Even if it means a worse shot. Unless, guard or damage reduction gives range attack to the front and the side. Yes, yeah, stay down. We don't have a good shot anyway. This game is like so full of action, the way like it's animated. That I like doing it with cinematic mode because it, it makes it really helps me get into it. Honestly. Even if sometimes it clips to the ground in this game. Oh nope, he shot at me and missed. So we've drawn them out. We have successfully drawn them out. They're coming to scout us. They're leaving their safe base where they can get free sensor locks and such. What's the sensor range on the base? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I don't know what the range is on the base, so we'll go Waiting with glitch next. Oh, your heat's going up. Now, we could risk it. We only took 10 damage from that last turn. That wasn't that a... It looked scarier than it was. What we want to do is get a clear shot on the turret generator. And take out their turret positions while we engage the mechs. Especially because you can multi-attack. So you can take pot shots of them below while still targeting the generator, though we should probably primarily target the generator with everything and try to take it out very quickly. Got Especially it. with that PPC on it, it might just go down instantly. Oh, so close. Oh. They could have saved us a turn of fire. Ugh. Let's have me go next. Since I'm going to be our primary engagement mech. And they're in my best range right now. This one doesn't even have many pips. Like that one had to, that one ran a bit. This one has done nothing. It's just standing there. I don't have any of the thing gizmos that we might want, so I'm just gonna fire on this guy and see what the fuck happens. Ready for orders. Alright. Ooh, you can get three pips there. You know, you should go on the spider and support our spider. If we if we concentrate our fire too much, um, 
on the wrong mech, it'll leave the spider under fire for a little longer than it's comfortable. We're gonna have to spread out and do this properly. Instead of just concentrating fire and trying to sweep behind, I don't think the spider can hold out uh, long enough to do that particular tactic. We don't have a good shot at all, though. It's a terrible shot. It might be better to shoot the turret generator at that point. Can we? Yes. Yeah, it is better to shoot the turret generator at this point. Firing. So that's what we're gonna do. And with that, the two turrets are down. It risks the spider a bit, but not by much. Those LRMs are not going to do a lot of damage. Oh. Fire is on the black tank, but that's an easier one to be taking damage on. The spider. The spider cannot afford to take damage at all. Receiving Speaking you. of the spider, we're gonna have to do something about one of these. We cannot. We can. Do we want to melee you? They'll do a lot of knockdown damage. Are you injured from any particular side? No, then we're gonna do the best side, which is the rear. We're gonna punch Moving you. To position. And hope that uh, <coughs> makes you bit less enthusiastic. All right, that spider's backing up a bit. I'm really starting to understand this game. Like, the first time I played Battletech, um, the tabletop version of Battletech, I didn't have a very good, um, like, I've only played it one, t uh, a f couple of times properly, and I I've never really gotten what the strategy is. I'm just like, oh, we're just big mechs running against each other, but no, I'm seeing it I now. Hear ya. These mechs each do slightly different things. There's certain strategies that are, are that are always beneficial. You have to make some judgments around that, but mostly it's just, you know, keeping things the way they should be. Moving out. So who do we concentrate fire on? You're gonna have to make this decision. Because whoever you're gonna hit is gonna do a lot of damage. This one would be easier to hit. This one's a lot harder to hit. And is um is uh, taken up with two bigger units that can stand against it for a while. So no, this one is the one that makes the most sense to concentrate fire on. It's also it's already damaging the center torso. It got punched. We can take the heat. Fire. Uh -huh. The pilot's injured. Good. So that spider's in trouble now. Their abilities are reduced because they lost part of the right torso. They're they're not going to be able to stand up as well against the against the the other spider. All right. So that's who we're concentrating fire on. Let's commit to that strategy. Although I could also go continue to damage, but it'll expose me to fire from the others, so no, it makes the most sense to concentrate fire on that guy. That was, that was the right decision. I see no reason to change. I can't move more than, so I'm moving to cover. I'll cover both of them. I'll just back myself up into a corner here, and um, fire away at the more damaged uh, enemy. More damage, less evasive enemy. I have a significantly better All chance of hitting. And that mech is down, so that was the right strategy. That was absolutely the right strategy. And 
now lost one mech. They've lost all the turrets on the map. And they've barely scratched my team. So I'm in a good position here. Can I... That isn't too far. Then, I, then I'll take the extra evasion. I'll do the thing that keeps me moving so that you have the hardest time hitting me. Very fluid, the battlefield of this century. You're not worth firing. You're not worth firing. Other two are worth firing. He's good. Now I feel like I'm talking like a pilot would talk. So that commando is getting out of there. <laughs> the commander said, no, this is a trap. I've been ambushed. Oh, good shot, though. Hit to the head. Worrisome. Worrisome. We'll have to keep an eye on you. Standing by. Where can I attack you? Where I get the most ability to move? I just want to run by and, and knock you on the butt. On my way. And maybe finish you off. Targeting for physical attack. And we miss. Great job, Decker. I'm real glad that I restarted this campaign to save your fucking ass. <laughs> Great job, man. The entire point of this was to save you, bud. And now, and now you go and miss on me. <laughs> Waiting for orders. Oh well. <laughs> Oh well, that's the game. <laughs> aye, aye. I'd still better to have gone back. I was still, I wasn't feeling confident in the game. I almost every one of my mechs needed heavy structural repairs. <laughs> like my entire team was out for like two months <clears throat> because of fucking one battle. That means I did a poor job as a commander. <laughs> I wanted a second chance On your tail. because I didn't want to like just progress, just keep going to missions and going. Oh God, like we're all gonna die. I only have two mechs that I can actually actually use right now. Okay. So how are you doing? Yin can probably use some pressure off. So it would be better to start with do, Glitch. Leah? Especially because Glitch actually has multi-target, which is nice. Um, and have Glitch... Aw, oh, jeez. Do I have to jump to do it? Yes, but I'll be fine. I'm still going to lose some of everything, so this is what we're going to have to do, is spend this turn jumping. As we corral this one poor spider and finish him off. Oh, you can fire after after doing that. But we can't fire your PPC. We, there's no point in firing your LRM, so it's just going to be the medium laser, but he might be... This guy's pretty... Well done. The laser won't finish him off. It's not enough, but it, it'll it could maybe like knock him, uh, make him unsteady or something. Special delivery. Nice. Okay, we took out some when of his I weapons. You, you'll take it and like it. You'll take it and like it. <laughs> Jeez, lady, don't get kinky on, on this poor guy. Like, it's kinky enough that we're fucking hunting, like, rounding him up like a hunted animal right now. The later fucking trap for him. I'm just gonna get right up in there and, and, and finish the job. Like, this, this has got to be done. Hmm. But I'm, I'm not doing the best right now. I am not doing the best. Uh, but the alternative is what to back up. That might actually be helpful for this mech. No, we don't want to hunt from from that direction. 
because this mech has some long range guns and we're already not doing the best. So we'll get rid of some of our, our two worst medium lasers, not worth firing them. Better to keep heat steady rather than gain, just in case. And while I was cautious, it was unnecessary. Because he went down easy. Alright. So now that our hunt is done, we need to go destroy the Corpsec Tower. Don't we? And we need to destroy a Shadow Hawk. That would be the one that was talking to us, the one with the kind of Weasley guy's voice in it. Okay. Is there any point in holding more still? No. The weather's hot here. It's one of the reasons we gotta worry about heating a lot more than other we might in other environments. We need to form up, squad. And sprint over there. Hut, hut. Bad, this hunter killer squadron of ours. We bagged us two mechs, and in the process, they we were able to take their base. Now, however, you know we're here. You know where we're up to, <coughs> and they know where we're going. So they're liable to intercept us, huh? Where would be the best way to intercept us? Either up here up here or up here but probably up here that's the most likely i think what's up boss there we go my pretties so scout scout it is your job to find this prey so that we may more properly round him up sorry i'm enjoying being this character i'm 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 kind of playing it being being the dread pirate Yeen here. Uh, can guard and trench remove all stability damage your next initiative is increased by one? No, there's n I do not need to do that yet. Uh, we'll just do normal bracing. Not that we need it. Oh, we, we can use uh, in, uh, those abilities. Ah, okay, we've got eyes on him. Behemoth. By. Behemoth. My pretty. Go around this way. <laughs> Arr. And get on your guard in case they come over the hill. <laughs> Yar. There be vehicles incoming. Yar. I wonder how we'll take them out. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. All right, your jump jets are thankfully repaired from when uh, we uh, three years ago. One would hope your jump jets would be repaired in three years, though. You never know at uh, mechanics these days. <laughs> Particularly when you're in our line of work. <laughs> Waiting on you, Commander. Ah, okay. Piracy, huh? We blow up this here tower and make money. Mercenary work and privateering is a bit more profitable, I think, than simply stealing our way to glory. <laughs> Certainly the mechanics treat you better. Ready for orders. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. It's down there. If we move there, can you see him? It's worth risking poking your head out. Location you poke your head out there, Decker. Drecker. With your spider. And go spot the enemy for us. Yeah. 
That's the Shadowhawk, all right. Coming up the hill. Ah, oh, Decker, Decker. If only you had sensor lock. We could be firing already. Rather than having to work our way over. It's what a pirate do would do, yeah. <coughs> <laughs> Dread the pirate I plow the space waves and roam the seas. I'm the dread pirate Good to go. Okay. No particular order since we have jump jets anyway. We're going to go around the bend here. And come up alongside them. Yeah. Excuse me for one moment, stream. I need to check on something. Yeah. Nope. There'll be no word on dinner. No. Here, the dread of Pyrodine shall make her name. Etc. Etc. Arr. These vehicles be threatening our erstwhile allies base. That we cannot abide. No. We are going Engaging jump jets. to launch here. <laughs> we're going to launch here, and we're going to fire on the scorpions as soon as we can. We're working on my pirate's voice to do today. Orders. Give me a moment and I'll settle on something. <laughs> Alright. That's perhaps unnecessarily close and unnecessarily easy to hit. So do we go around behind? Or do we go around forward? If we go forward, we'll lead them into our guys, but then it'll be a straight up fight. If we go behind him, he may turn around and and attack us. Ah. He's out of the base, isn't he? We don't want to give them line of sight. But it's better to move than be out of sight. But since he already probably has us in sensor range. And preparing a broadside for us. Yarr. Okay. You, unfortunately, shall have to delay your attack because you went very fast <coughs> or no because you're not in range so the spider shall take care of the building while the others engage the shadow hawk unfortunately we were not able to get ourselves into the best possible positions for taking the shadow hawk mm, especially that's my shadow hawk Wait, no, is that my- no, that's his Shadowhawk. It's gotta be. And there's the Vindicator- and there's the Blackjack, so yeah, that's his Shadowhawk. So who is in the best position to attack this Shadowhawk? 
He already destroyed the vehicle there. The vehicle's coming around. So. Somebody already destroyed the vehicle. I don't remember if it was me. Yes, like this. From one perch to another, we shall fly our way across the sea of sand. Across the sea of sand. Hmm, poor odds. Poor odds indeed. We might as well hit him with everything we've got. Hmm, no, with such poor odds, it might be better to conserve on heat in this environment. We'll simply fire our AC2s just in case and to reduce evasion. No damage detected. Scorpion's position in is unfortunate. Waiting for orders. Scorpion should be in a better position for us to shoot it, I think. You shall jump as well. Yes, I'm seeing the point in jumping now. Very much. Affirmative. You know, you unfortunately are better as a long range mech, but I think you also have multi target. We're not gonna do a called shot then. Because we'd rather multi target. So, number one shall be you. Number one shall be you. Can only be shotgun long range missiles. One shall be you. You. So, A shall be shot by long range missiles. B shall be shot by the PPC. And so we no shall fire at both of them. <coughs> I think that pirate voice is scratching up my um, my throat a bit. The Shadowhawk can take a bit of a beating, can't it? Good to go. It's perhaps a bit. better tone than I anticipated it to be. We'll also jump here. Surprise attack, very fast, extra evasion. Jumping. And you're within the range of a lot of good things, my dear. In range of a lot of good things, indeed. You cannot multi-target, but you can precision strike. Should you precision an AC5, damage 45. NSRM. Yes, we should definitely precision strike. Why wouldn't we precision strike? We can't multi strike. And this one, oh my, is already pretty damaged. Oh no, we can't hit there. 9, 48, 2%, 48%. If we knock him down, we have a better chance of recovering parts of the mech and slowing him down so we can outmaneuver him. What's in the left arm? Just the left arm. What's in the left leg? Heat sink. What's the left thing? AC5, AC5 ammo. We like the AC5 as well. So should target the legs. And fire with everything we've got. Yes, so reducing evasion helped our vehicles, to, our allies destroy it. It's always better when they we get to conserve ammunition. It doesn't change our fee much at all. Yar. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be so much fun. Okay, then we go into the woods because why not? Affirmative. It'll give us slightly extra cover. Then we target 
all weapons on the tower on. and fire to our hearts in it. I brought it down, Commander. And it's down. All this, all that remains then is the Shadowhawk. <coughs> Excuse me. A good use of a spider, since the spider doesn't have a lot of hit points. It's in a better position to uh, to uh, carry out objectives relative to the other mechs, uh, unless you have something better to carry out those objectives with, of course. Um, but it has its uses. We'll have the blackjack has the, mm, but you you have an injury and that's probably uh, slowing you down as well. Mm. You then yeah. you had the least heat. You're gonna get as close as you can and then just fire. Your uh, you don't have very good short range things, so you're better off moving up slightly and that's appreciable location confirmed you don't want to get too close you're not a close range fighter but then neither are they we're not going to fire the long range missiles why waste the ammunition and hopefully we take this leg out and cause him to fall because pilot injuries mean less damage to the mech, which means more salvage for me. What can I do for you? Likewise, we are going to now go punch the mech. Knowing that by punching, we're more likely to knock it down. On my way! And the leg is down. A good hit, and it falls. And now the pilot is injured, which means we can we can just punch it in the head if we want to, in order to preserve the, the most expensive parts of the mech. So we're going to do a called shot. With Ian. A called shot with Ian to the head while it's knocked down. Assuming we have a good line of fire here. To the head. Lower chance of hitting, but why not? With all the things we're shooting at, we're likely to hit it. Great job, Commander. And there it goes. The sooner we can collect our pay and break orbit, the better. Good. Mm, but we should retreat in good order. Spider's still out and about. We have tons of heat. We can afford to wait. Now I happen to know that these uh, allies uh, betray us. But even if you didn't know this, it would be a good idea as a commander to worry about such things. We don't care if you're facing the wrong direction, get to the right location. You. You're also fairly long range. So you just hang out up there. And we'll have the spider get as close to our position as possible. As quickly as possible. On it. Even if it means crushing buildings, yes. We do not care so much about the buildings of our enemies, I think. No, we're just gonna hang out a little while. Stabilizing. Engaging coolant system. A ten hut. Get back into formation as quickly as possible. Me hearties. Roger 
Oops. Very well. Excuse me a moment. All right. So now we can safely be in to form up. Who shall go first? Uh, Decker, of course, go. should go first. Block each other's ways to guarantee who gets hit first in the event we are attacked. Good order is important in traveling. Wait, Wait once. Mm -hmm. Bean. The last time my commander got beaten up a bit by this ambush. But you're at least going to be moving quickly. In good order. And folks are going to be there with you. I read you, Commander. Moving out. So we're just going to walk directly into their trap. The good little soldiers. But we know where we need to be pointing. I'm also wanting to roleplay this aspect, honestly, of not really knowing. Even though I know I'm, we're going to be attacked and I could set up a little bit better if I had done so. Brilliant work, Commander. We should have no trouble mopping up at the other platforms now that their defenses are down. We get the job done. Speaking of which, I wasn't finished. These platforms won't do us much good if we can't hold them. Majesty Metals taught us that, so we're going to need your battle max. You're going to want to reconsider that. Why? Your lance has already been target locked by our turrets. Now power down and surrender and we'll let you walk. Or try to fight and we'll tear you to shreds. Your call. <coughs> well, there goes our goddamn payday. Hold tight, Commander. We're on our way. Yeah, so we're getting... A, these guys are screwing us. But they perhaps have somewhat underestimated the power of a full lens of max. Ready for orders. To wit. Even just one little light mag. Assuming I am not being a bit too hasty here, but I think I am not. I see no enemies in sight. Ah, uh, the striker is there. Could come up behind me, but we'll just have to deal with that. It's more important that we get this hit in. I think. All weapons are go. I hope. I hope I didn't make the wrong decision there again. Structure exposed, but not down. An unknown vehicle racing around the, cor the corner. It's so dramatic. Ian, you need to get out of there before you get in trouble. Ian, you need to get out of there before you're in trouble! This is the advantage of jumping. My friends. And what kind of things are you? A light shredder turret. Light shredder turret. Close range. Heat weapons. Oh my. I can't split target, so fire everything we fire fire everything we've got. Target destroyed. Oh dear. 
perhaps we are not so unlucky, we are not so easily trapped after all. One of your turrets is down before it even was able to fire. Hey, Before you even knew, before anybody even knew what was happening, the mechs were already jumping and uh, jumping out of the platform. And firing upon the enemy generator turret, which was finally in its appropriate do. range, or turret generator, which when it was finally in the appropriate range, range. But the generator turret was also not so easily knocked down. But then in the last act, at the very last minute, Behemoth Shagamoth, Shadow uh, Hawk launches into the air and fires upon the turret turret generator. Locking on target. With all weapons to make sure the turrets are destroyed. Target eliminated. Saving the team from total destruction at the hands of this random ass mining company. <laughs> that shot went internal. Oh gosh. That was unfortunate for Decker. Ready for orders. Shovel and turtle into his right arm, where most of his jump jets were located. Right torso, where most of his jump jets were located. The jump jets won't explode, but they could cause a lot of. But he could take a lot of damage. It's an act, perhaps, either of desperation or defiance. He death from above the scorpion. The vehicle was destroyed as the mech slammed into the ground. Vehicle trashed. Eyes began searching for the next target to kill. But the spider had been making risky moves, and a galleon was coming up behind him. But not far enough to actually make contact. And do damage. Now in good order, the, the rest of the crew began began moving their mechs up. First glitch with their multi-targeting abilities. Walk forward to split fire between targets and maybe take two vehicles out in one turn. Two upon the galleon and one upon the striker. Ra raising her heat to, to dangerous levels, Glitch fired her weapons. The galleon lied dead, but the striker had had only been glanced. What's up, Fox? Behemoth then moved up into the town, taking position behind the building. She then aimed at the striker with her AC-5, medium laser, and SRM-2, and fired into its left side. And the vehicle exploded. Vehicle trashed. Stan... Sumire Meyer chimed in. Sumire Meyer, the navigator, chimed in. Stand by for extraction, Commander. Let's get the hell out of here. Oh, and Darius? I know, Meyer, I know. You want another team meeting. Give the man a prize! Mission successful. And with that, the squad successfully evaded the ambush with all their mechs completely intact and barely any damage on uh, uh, penetrating, with not a critical shot, penetrating their armor. That, my friends, is Battletech. That is Battletech. 
is when you get to that point with this game. And the game tells you a story of what happened. The mission was completed. We survived. We engaged and destroyed enemy units. We recaptured uh, our employers' mining platforms, but we made no money because they betrayed us in the end. Well, then, Commander, you made the best of a bad situation. You're hoping we don't run into another job like that one. You're telling me. Uh, Ye Captain Yeen, unfortunately, Commander Yeen, unfortunately, was injured and would be out for twenty for nearly a month. Glitch Behemoth and Decker came back uh, completely intact, but Decker had Decker's spider had suffered some internal damage. Hopefully that would not be difficult to fix. Yeen had earned three mech kills and one vehicle kill, and each of the rest of the team had killed at least one vehicle themselves. Mostly due to good positioning. And the AC and the AC2's on her back. Though it really had been a team effort to take those mechs down. You need to start finding us better clients, Darius. I mean it. We've been slumming it on the ass end of the frontier for three years now, and we are drowning in debt. I'm fully aware of our financial situ situation, Meyer, but I can't just conjure up new clients out of thin air. Haida, do me a solid and back me up on this. Captain Haida. You call me Captain Yeen. <laughs> Is this why you all made me your commander? So I could break up fights and review financial reports? If we're really that hard up on cash, you need to stop talking and start doing something about it. No thanks, Darius. I didn't take command of this outfit to settle arguments. Maybe your commander so I could break up fights and review financial reports? Damn right it is. It isn't like any of us wanted the job. Darius, could you walk us through the details of the trouble we're in? It might help you if if you broke things apart, d things down point by point. Sure thing, Yang. Point one, Meyer's right. We're in debt. Every sea bill we make technically belongs to the banks. Point two, this corner of the frontier is a dead zone for mercenary work. There are clients, but they're terrible. That's just a fact. I just realized I have Twitch closed, and now I'm not sure if people have been chatting in the, uh, in the stream chat. It seems not so far, unless I missed it when I signed out. If so, I'm sorry. Um, I really need to have a better solution for um, listening into the stream chat than just using my phone. Um, point two, this corner of the frontier is a dead zone for mercenary work. They're clients, but they're terrible. That's just a fact. And that's it. There are no other points. What's your best case scenario? How many jobs will it take to repay the loans? Why not just refuse to pay? We can afford to throw our weight around. We've got battle mechs. Okay, we're in a bad spot. What are we going to do about it? Why not just refuse to pay? We can afford to fight our, way, fight our weight around. We've got battle mechs. That's how a pirate would respond, if not me. That wouldn't be a very good idea, Haida. The banks wouldn't come for us themselves, they'd hire mercenaries, and you already know how hard up frontier marks are for work. If we stiff the banks, we'll wind up dead or in debtor's prison, and out here in the frontier, those are basically the same thing. Uh, what's our best case scenario? How many jobs will it take to repay the loans? Truthfully, I can't even say. We're in a pretty deep hole. And from where I'm standing, I don't see a whole lot of daylight. The thing is, these banks... And I use that word loosely. They don't want us to pay off our loans. They'll do whatever they can get they can get away with to keep us on the hook. Hit us with fees, jack up our interest rates, misfire file our paperwork. I'm trying to find us a way out of this, but it's gonna take time. Oh boy, sleazy ass banks. Every day that passes we accumulate more debt. If we keep going like we have been, we're screwed. Okay, so we're in a bad so we're in a bad spot. What are we gonna do about it? 
I don't see what else we can do, Haida. Already serving up every legitimate contract I can find. Unless you want me to sidestep the mercenary review board entirely, we're basically out of options. Around the MRB? No thanks. Taking a certified job is a great way to wind up with a knife in your back. Let's give a trade on a board certified contract, Yang. How much worse could it get? We're already talking a risk here. I don't want to to compound them unless I absolutely have to. It doesn't sound like such a bad idea to me. No guts, no galaxy, right? That's me. <laughs> Can't say I'm excited about inviting that kind of trouble, but you're the boss. Remind me again why we don't just skip town and head to a nicer corner of the periphery? Because the banks and the jump ship crews have an arrangement. And if we pay up, they're gonna keep us on the short leash. On a short leash. That's good reason. Look, Darius, Meyer's right. We need to start earning some real money, and we need to do it soon. It's only a matter of time before something breaks down that I can't fix with duct tape and good intentions. So, origin loner. If I were afraid of taking risks, I never would have let that gold cage my parents call home. We're going to have to be just as bold. That's for times, people. Darius, you know what you need to do. And today, I'd rather go down fighting than wind up broke. Afraid of taking risks, I never would have let them that gilded cage my parents called the home we're gonna have to uh have to just be just as bold hear that jerry s the voice of experience speaks going around the mrb might kill us sure but might so might a thousand other things we're mercenaries taking versus our business but we need to get paid it's settled then i'll start digging for contracts outside of the mrb system who knows maybe it'll work out for the best it isn't like we've got all that much to lose in the meantime, we need to find another paying job, and our prospects in this system have completely dried up. I recommend booking travel to a neighboring system and seeing what the review board has for us. With any luck, we'll find enough work to keep going until something better rolls in. So, the banks are holding our jump ship acts as hostage until we repair debts. For now, we can only go between Urkruini and the nearby systems of Alloway, Bellerophon, and Detroit. Our top priority right now needs to be finding work so we can raise cash. None of the contracts here are very good. I picked out the only viable one I could find and it helpfully includes our travel fees as part of the deal. Come by the command center when you're ready to review it. All right. I'm thinking that I'm gonna cut this one as short. The stream, like I think we've only done like half an hour so far. I'll maybe do a little bit more, but it's getting near dinner time around here, so I don't want to, um, you know, just interrupt the stream suddenly because of dinner or something. Still no dinner plans that I'm aware of. I don't even know when they're coming home exactly. Your opinion is a frozen wasteland, but geothermal vents create temperate zones, which the planet's few inhabitants live in mind the plentiful resources. Cool. I'm out of, uh, Captain Haida is out of, uh, action for 26 days, so I'm probably just hanging out there with bandages on my face. We gotta pay everybody in 96 days as well. But we actually have a decent chunk of funds because our mechs are in pretty good repair this time. So, being as the mechs, being as the mechs are our chief source of income, repairing the mechs is our first priority, as it were. Before hiring people, before anything else, you fix the mechs. It's only some minor repairs, 9,000 sea bills, four days, plenty of time, plenty of options. Good to repair the mechs, you see. Now we gotta decide between the locust and the spider <coughs> as our primary scout mech. We have several medium mechs, different kinds of hard points. The Shadow Hawk is good at missiles and bullets. The Vindicator likes energy weapons and support weapons and jump jet upgrades. Our 
and the blackjack likes energy weapons, bullets, and support weapons, but not missiles, not missiles. Unfortunate, because missile, missiles be one of our better options for firing on things. Light fire support, skirmisher and cavalry for the Shadowhawk. The Vindicator, it says, is fire support and brawler, which is an odd combination when you think about it, but it basically means, like, sniper, lineman kind of thing. Either firing from far away or beating somebody up up close. A blackjack is fire support and skirmisher. Blackjacks don't want to get too close. and they, Or they want to stand back and be firing. So we have a lot of fire support. And this one is light fire support. So it should w run around uh, things firing on them here and there. A spider is a scout. I like using the spider as a scout. The locust is more you engage with your other mechs first and then you engage with the locust. You know? You engage with the other mechs first and then you engage with the locust. What components do we have? What components do we have? We have AC-10 ammo, we have a lot of ammo, but not a lot of weapons. It's good to have extras of ammo, though, I'll be honest. That was a problem in the, um, it's good to have extras of ammo for everything, because sometimes you'll get a weapon, but you won't get its ammo uh, as an upgrade for your mech, and then you can't install it, even if you want to. And we're not going to be worried about refitting them right now because we still gotta wait until our spider is um, is done anyway before we even think about a refit. I think. Actually, I'm not sure. Uh, where's the thing about refit? Refit. Ah, med tech. Med, three med tech points a day. <coughs> no, we can only work on one project at a time. It's the most efficient way to do it. So, let's see our guys. Who do we got in our stable? We have one spare pilot, which is Medusa here. One that's good at shooting. Not a very good pilot. Good at tactics. So good at sniping. So tactics are good if you're a long range person. Uh, gut uh, is good if you're a line weapon, uh, a line mech, basically. Um, it allows you to run hotter and it allows you to, um, to take more hits. So this is something for up close, it's guts, which Behemoth has a lot of, I might add. This is gunnery, hands to hit with range weaponry. Higher skill is an effective counter to evasion environmental effects that hamper targeting. So good, this is our best sniper by far. But not piloting, piloting increases the melee hit chance and base sprint distance. So piloting is for, is if you're gonna be an up close kind of punchy mech, you want piloting. If you're gonna be in the line, um, if you're going to be, you know, a, a tank, basically, then you need guts. If you're going to be fire support, or, um, like, a scout, possibly, then you want tactics. And if you're going to be, you know, a direct fire line, line support, you want gun gunnery. So tactics are for um, either precision striking or indirect fire, basically. And gunnery is good for, um, yeah, for just straight up shooting things. Um, so like gun plus guts would be a line mech. Gun and guts, just give them a lot of guns and a big old mech and have them just punch, punch the crap out of things. A gun pilot, a gun pilot, um, is a, a good, like, close range fighter, basically. 
uh, pilot pilot guts actually would be a good like melee fighter, but like a heavy melee fighter. Uh, piloting and tactics would be a scout, you know, kind of a, a sniper mech, basically. Um, well, not a sniper mech, but like a scout, basically, would want gunnery and tactics. So, our most interesting folks here are Behemoth and Glitch, who are both very specialized. Behemoth wants to be out there, um, in, in the lot of it, you know, doing melee hits and firing all guns, uh, is alright at guns, just normal at guns, basically, and is, uh, not so good on tactics, not so good on called shot and stuff like that, not, not really a thinker, Behemoth. Uh, Behemoth also already has Bulwark, passive being guarded, 50% damage to... So, uh, Behemoth, by upping guts a lot, has become a mech that's good to just sit still, just plant yourself down and fire as many guns as you can, basically. Well, like, go into melee and then just sit there, basically. Basic chance, base sprint, threshold of stability that triggers and steady, so you're good at getting, you can get shot better, so this one's really good at, like, Pilots are also good at dealing with not getting tripped up and getting shot. Um, so, just somebody who... This person's a tank. Uh, Decker um, is kind of a little bit... Good at a little bit of everything. Uh, best at piloting and tactics, which make him... Uh, you know, somebody you'd imagine being a back roll person. But doesn't really have a class yet. So yeah, this one's class is Defender right now. He will stand their ground more effectively through bulwark and able to suffer additional injuries before being incapacitated. Can also better control the recoil effects from their weapons. So big, loud, snazzy guns on these ones. This is a gunner. Add up to the use of ranged weaponry in combat and able to take multiple opponents at once via multi-target. So this one's a good sniper, basically. Well, a good gunboat pilot. Medusa doesn't really have a specialization yet, either. Uh, but it is inferior to Decker, which explains why he's in the back, and I am not really that great a pilot at all. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I have, like, very little in gunnery and stuff, but I also have a lot of XP to spend right now. So the question is, what do we need? Now, me being me, I'd probably want to stay in my mech. Well, no, because I am I am a dread pirate. Dread pirates do not stay in their mechs. That old thing is just a hunk of junk from my old life as a as a aristocrat. But that's not me anymore. That is how things are now. Me hearties. Times change, people change, houses rise and fall. <sighs> Do we have somebody good at shooting and good at taking damage? So we either need somebody good at piloting or good at tactics. Now, me being the dread pirate I am, uh, piloting and tactics actually, well, we already have somebody who's kind of towards piloting and tactics. We could you tactics and gunnery? What would tactics and gunnery be? Because the thing is, you can only get up to level four with uh, two skills. One can get up to level seven, and one can get up to level ten. So weapons hit, melee hit. So this will give me plus one health. Minus one indirect fire penalty. I feel like I should take this one first. Training confirmed, Commander. And then just get my myself up even here. So I can be anything right now. What should I be? So I should either have piloting or tactics as my core skill. 
this is me we're talking about. So, high levels of tactics do once. Max pub is mech warrior gain plus one initiative and remove one bar of stability damage when reserving. Nice, so I can just reserve to, to increase my stability. I can just wait a little. Uh, select a target within sensor range to reveal it until the end of the current round and remove two of its evasive charges. That's pretty good. That's a universally good roll. This unit can move after shooting if it has not moved yet. So you can shoot and then move. And this unit generates an extra evasive charge for movement actions up to its maximum. I think we're going to take more more uh, piloting right now. So we are pretty evasive. Training complete. And what are we beyond besides this? Remaining stationary. No, we don't want to remain stationary. We want to be running. We want to be taking advantage of evasive movement. But it goes both ways because then you also just have plus one evasion at all times. So, uh, but we already have somebody who's good at guts and we already have somebody who's good at piloting. But they're going to get secondary things too. So what are their secondary things going to be? So behemoth this would be piloting and guts to do. Um, I think we should get everybody up to at least four and everything before we even think about adding to other things. Well, no. No, we should specialize. We should specialize. Um, that'll be the most cost-effective thing. So, mostly. So, do do do. You are probably going to be gunnery and tactics, so you're going to be a long-distance person glitch. So, you're going to be gunnery and tactics. Clearly. You're going to be guts and piloting. So we should not take uh, guts and piloting. You are going to be piloting and tactics. So she, we should not take pilots, which leaves gunnery. We don't have anybody with piloting and gunnery. Mech warrior training. So Please. this leaves us with... Uh, one person with padding and guts, one person with uh, padding and tactics, one person with gunnery and tactics, uh, one person with gunnery and piloting, and one person with piloting and something. So what things are left? There's four, so there should be eight combinations. So pilot guts. Well, I mean... Uh, no, there should be one, two, three. There should be four combinations, shouldn't there? So the next one is going to duplicate somebody, but they're going to have something ahead. So I think they're going to do pilot. They're going to duplicate piloting, and they'll duplicate one other thing. <coughs> so let's go to yes, Behemoth man. now. Behemoth cannot upgrade any. Uh, could upgrade her tactics. It's pretty cheap to do. But no, we should resist the temptation until you have both piloting and guts up. I mean, uh, it does still reduce your indirect fire penalty. No, I feel like Draining going up from two is good. I feel like it's good to be a little bit spread out right now, just in case we don't have the right pilot for the right mech all the time. So you... Ideally, would now specialize. Yes, you will hold off. Well, no, you can buy. So, do we want you to specialize in tactics first or piloting first? Piloting will make you more survivable, and we have plenty of other people who are doing uh, stuff similar to tactics. So, you're good at hitting, you're not going to be Dream. knocked down easily, you're a good person to be piloting, and your overall invasiveness is, is up. Um, cool. 
you can upgrade anything. You can upgrade piloting to three, and you should for reasons we just Next discussed. Training complete. Because it's not a good idea to have that anything that's that clearing a problem. Yeah, and you're going to immediately upgrade piloting. Training confirmed. Command. Because we should always take four to five whenever we can before doing any other jumps. Cool. That's that. That's our mech warriors. So we have piloting and tactics. We currently we only have people with one of each. So we have a gunner, a pilot, um, a def we have a gunner, two pilots, and a defender currently for our mechs for a month. So that's going to tell us what to do. Oh, we need to customize our company. That we need to do. I take it back. So... That is our symbol. Company's name currently is Yeans Marauders. It's pretty good. Gallant Agents of Yin. Gallant Agents of Yin, Gallant Arsons, Gallant. Gallant Airmen, Gallant Aspirants, Gallant Aspirants of Yin. Gallant Aspirants of Yin. Gallop, gallant, grand, grandiose, golden, golden. That's interesting. We can do different crests, can't we? The glamorous, glamorous. Glamorous Aspirants of Yin. <laughs> G-A-Y. So what would be something for the Glamorous Aspirants of Yin? That's pretty good. It may be a dragon, but it's pretty close. Listen to that. Listen to the rhino. Well, rhino kind of makes sense a little. Hmm. Mm, I'd feel bad. That looks kind of religious. I don't want to be that religious. I don't want to have a boot of wheel. That's pretty good. That is snazzy. I'm very tempted by that one. Oh, that one, that one has a pet tag on it. I know that's not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like an orbit or something, but it looks like a pet tag. Uh, it's done. I think we have a winner. I think we have a winner with pet tag. Oh my god. I know it's supposed to be like, oh, it's supposed to be like a moon rising over horizon. That's a really good look. But, uh... <laughs> Or a star circling above a planet, like circling above the ground, but uh no. What it looks like to me the most now is a dog tag. It's a it's a puppy tag. We're puppy eens. Yeah, we're the glamorous aspirants of yin, which means we gotta have yin colors. And what are those yin colors gonna be? Where's brown? It's gotta be brown or green. Wanna give them leopard spots, almost. We'll start with just like the basic colors of a yin. So we have that color, then we have a lighter color, then we have the accent. Hmm. Lighter color would be, no, the, ac the accent would be black because yin's are black. Is 
secondary color has got to be a good underbelly look. What's a good underbelly look? It should be... No, no, no. That's the workable. That feels the closest. That one feels cartoony. Ah, uh, that one works. It's, they're kind of close, but it works. They are kind of. I use something more dramatic. Oh, but they're all bunked up anyway. Could do a darker brown. Could you see the whole thing? No, no, no. I, I mean, I like that color. Fuchsia. Fuchsia's good. Good. Ah! But I think uh, green, because green is my color. No. We'll just go with, uh, yeah, that look. That look was the good one. So we are the glamorous aspirants of Yeans. We are of Yeen. We are in puppy dog costume with our puppy dog tag banner, and we are the dread pirates of 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 the frontier. We is yo ho. So let's look in the hiring hall and see what kind of riffraff there be around this planet. Pig pen here could be useful. Gotta have to work on the name, though. We're not glamorous enough to hire Outrider and Monkfish here. Pigpen, though, is looking good. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, this one is the best one. And they cost to a boy howdy for being so, but that's acceptable. We need an extra hand in case another person gets knocked out. New mech warriors available. How are our finances looking? How will be our finances? Pigpen takes a lower amount of money. Or that'd be the cat. Excuse me. Out any minute, you know. Yar. Mm. Ah. So, a pretty penny costs our warriors. Our warriors are more expensive to maintain than the machines. Well, if we be losing you before payday, that'd be okay. Yeah, 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 kitty. That was my cat trying to jump on the table. So it is better than to buy things at the store than to hire on more warriors. Already pushing it as it is. So you get a part of a of a of another spider. Or, but I don't think so. I don't be thinking so. I think we'd be wanting ammo mostly. Equipment available. All equipment the ammo available. we can muster at this here station. New equipment available. So that we don't need to be getting ammo. Oh my, I've been buying the same thing over and over. New equipment available. I thought there was a limit to how many how much ammo I could New buy and I was wrong. Available. We don't want to go bankrupt just buying New SRMs. So just doing three of each of the generic things. New equipment available. Uh, that's all we can afford, I think. Spare jump jets. New equipment Spare available. Spare heat sink. Just in case we need them. Just in case we're somewhere that doesn't sell those things and we need them. I like to have a flamer. But you don't even sell flamer ammo. 
the thing one needs to power a, fl when a flamer. Um, a fascinating choice. Yeah, I, I should have noticed where it said unlimited there. Uh, sell? Do I have perhaps a little bit too much SRM2 ammo? No, 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 no. It protected me. Ah! Oh no. No, it didn't. Oh dear. I have 13 SRM ammo to sell, and I don't need that much. Recoup some of our losses there. That's fine. That's fine. That's good. So we don't have a lot of uh, weapons we could install. We could install an LRM-10. We could install a large laser, a medium laser, and an SRM-2, an SRM and an EC-2. You see. And what exactly do our mechs do again? So we have the blackjack is a medium mech. It says fire support and skirmisher. That's based upon what it has in the kettle. So the vindicator is the most damage soaking. Oh no, the shadow hawk is the most damage soaking mech we have. This one's a good person to just be out there getting shot at. And lo and behold, because it is our highest ton mech, this one. But this Shadowhawk is also very missile oriented. Missiles and AC guns. Indirect fire or direct fire or close to, or close fire. So either long range or very short range or long range. So long range. This one is meant to be a sniper with somebody with gunnery and tactics. Although, with all its uh, jump jets, it can also be very mobile, which is good, which is good. Hence, cavalry. Direct fire or long range. Locus here is somebody to go around with somebody like piloting and gunnery. Um, unless you have a better mech for them, of course. Like, this one is kind of a weird role for a mech. Because the only reason you'd bring this mech is because you can't bring additional mechs. You wouldn't do it because, like, if you can get a bigger mech, you'd always want a bigger mech that can do the same thing, um, practically. Uh, although light mechs, I think, get an evasion bonus. And a lot of them move very quickly. Eight jump jets or or eight jump jet slots. So the locust here should have a lot of jump jets in it. So should the spider. The shadow hawk decently. It does actually kind of fly. The vindicator decently. And of course jump jets saved our butts in that last one. You just gotta use them correctly. So I think this has proven to me the value of jump jets, firepower, movement, durability, average range, melee, heat efficiency. Yeah, so Shadowhawk's good at melee. You're good at movement and heat efficiency. You're not even good at melee, my god. This one has more firepower because of the medium laser. Because it's got this one laser on it that can actually do something. Um, and good heat efficiency. So it can just run around constantly. So it's a good one, yeah, to put jump jets on. Jump jets and actually I would put flamers on the on the locust and make it um, close close support. Uh, it depends what you want. Like the machine gun is better whenever uh, when they're picking off like damaged mechs, basically like they're meant to go pick off people. Or alternatively, you'd uh, put flamers on them to be kind of a uh, a light like a. a, 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 a like a not a dragoon, but like a uh, a lancer, a um, uh, an, a light cavalry, basically. I feel like there's a really good name for that that I keep. A hussar. You, this one's meant to be a hussar. Or no, not a hussar. Hussars, I thought were medium or heavy cavalry. 
Um, yeah, the Vindicator is fire support and brawler. It's actually pretty all around good from what I'm seeing here. Uh, Vindicator is good for punching people up. So this is actually good, a good one for, um, this is a good one for Behemoth. The Shadowhawk here is a good one for, or the Blackjack is actually a good one for the Sniper. I think. No, this one is piloting and gunnery would be good. And then they kind of run around on the outside of the battlefield and the Shadowhawk like gets somewhere high and does something. So why don't you have the PPC? Do you not have any energy mounts? You have an energy mount. Why don't you have the PPC? Maybe that's really you at your best. Maybe you should have the PPC. And the Vindicator here. Well, the Vindicator is also a good uh, thing. So I feel like the Shadowhawk should just have more LRNs if we're going to put anything on it. To really go with its role, you know? So you gotta adapt your mechs to what they have, but then you gotta start molding them around the, the needs of various uh, ships. Yeah, we don't gotta repair anything, everything's repaired. So currently your tonnage is all used up. What would we remove? It would be the SRM, possibly. But then you'd be helpless at close range. Like, you don't want to be helpless at light range. So that's 25 damage. How much does this one do? 8 times 2, so 16. A lot of stability damage, though. Stability damage 3 versus no stability. This one also has less heat. Um, so these are, like, in case somebody gets close, and these are ones that you fire at with from afar. Like, what does the AC-5 do here? 45 damage, very long range. Tons of stability damage. You'll basically hit somebody and knock them over. So this is the sniper rifle. And these ones... Uh, these ones are long range. They also do decent damage. They're going to be used direct fire mode. Not indirect fire mode. But you may want to use them in direct fire mode. Heat efficiency is good, perhaps better than it needs to be, frankly. We're using next up to 55 tons. So we use three of the slots on this thing, of the five slots it can have. So it can't jump as far as it can run. It's not going to be flying through the air. Um, uh, this is the thing. SRM versus the medium laser as its backup weapon. See, if it was going to get in close, I could give it a support hard point. Uh, could give you a flamer for close range if I had one, but I don't. Do I have a small laser? Not right now. So what would I do with the extra tonnage? AC 20 and AC uh, 10 have the same, don't they? Tonnage is 8 for an AC-5, and oh, wait, I don't have an AC-10 to just put on stuff. I have AC-10 ammo. What about a large laser? Worse on heat than a medium laser, I think, by far. Long range. Another sniping weapon it would be. Two slots. Two slots, one ton. How many tons on this one? Five tons, which is quite a bit more. The medium laser doesn't, so we'd save one ton, two tons, three tons by getting rid of the, SR, the SRM. We could use that for more armor around the really important stuff like the AC-5.
Um, we could use it for additional jump jets or heat sinks. It's already doing heat pretty fine. I don't think we could add up enough for a large laser in any way that would mess with the whole thing. What about an LRM-10? Its tonnage is 5. What's a normal LRM's tonnage? 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and then for 5, perhaps a heat sink? How does it do on heat? Heat is 6, and for the LRM-10, Heat is 12, which is significantly higher. Could get rid of a jump jet for a heavier vehicle. Could get rid of some armor, but I'm disinclined to do so. Especially because you have to get rid of a lot of armor to actually equal a ton. Uh, how about we remove, yeah, the SRM. Well, and you still would need uh, some kind of closer range weapon like the medium laser, the LRM. We put on the LRM 10, and we're one ton over, like I, like I said. A jump jet or a heat sink. A heat sink will hurt less, I think, than a jump jet at this point. Because we shouldn't be firing the medium laser except under exceptional circumstances. Okay. Now, how long will this actually take to do? Four components. Alright. It'll take seven days. So we don't have to do any heavy, big repairs on the mech. That's the thing that's hard. And we'll refit this mech, retool this mech to be, um, more focused on its role. Log and no. Shouldn't be too hard. So it'll take 11 days then to complete, which is about as long as I want to risk. That's what we're doing for now. Gla the glamorous. I misspelt that. It's not glamorous. Glam. Glamorous aspirants of Eden. No, I should make it gold, shouldn't I? I'm sorry, I keep fiddling with this, but I gotta get it just so. You know. Oh, no, 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 that's the primary color. We want the primary color to be what it was, which is yin brown. But th And this one, no, this one shall become gold. You're like actual shiny gold, and then this color shall remain black. That's even better. Well, no, we gotta put something actually glammy on 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 it, huh? Just a little touch of lavender. Yes, of lavender, or perhaps a touch of fuchsia. A touch of fuchsia. Even though it doesn't match the dog tag at all, I'd love to find something that actually matched. Uh, that one's pretty good. That one's a bit more, um, you know, like, ooh, moony, spirit magic, ooh, stuff. That one looks aspirational. A lot of uh, three uh, comets circling each other symbols. There's an Egyptian symbol down there. Ooh, I kind of like that look, honestly. Dog tag or no? I feel so bad between the dog tag though. But now I gotta. Uh, now I'm going like, no, this is the thing. So I gotta actually like match the thing. Though I doubt this game's gonna be good enough to us to. What the hell, I don't care if it doesn't match. <laughs> <laughs> Who 
Who am I kidding? All right, so I'm gonna talk to these guys and then I'm gonna accept their first contract and then we're gonna head out. I like how they just have change your com uh, company's heraldry. Can I actually like uh, navigate around the ship here? That would be kind of awesome actually. But no, it's just kind of a partial thing. Financial review. I mean, I kind of can point and click faction reputations. Like, that's awesome. I didn't realize you could go that immersive. But you do actually have to, like... Oh, could you actually click on here to go to the right location? Well, it's just showing me the current location, I guess. Um... Navigate and look at the navigation. Look at the star map. The contract travel, and then we have these other systems we can do. As Detroit, formerly Magistrar Sea Hold. These are really near the Magistrar Sea of Capri Capinoc. Uh, the Magistracy of Canopus. <clears throat> Here. Let's talk Welcome to you. Service, Commander. Hey, Commander, something I can do for you? The decision we made about uncertified contracts satisfy your concerns. My concerns will be satisfied until our creditors have been paid and the loan charts are off our backs. This is a step in the right direction, and that makes me happy. I'm not blind to the risk that uncertified contracts entail, by the way. I mean, I know that what we're doing is dangerous, but it's the best chance we've got to dig ourselves out of this hole. Got some questions about navigation. So I'll introduce you more to... Sure, ask away. I mean, it's kind of important. Oh, I'm not going to do the tutorials. Uh, I'm not going to do them... Uh, I'm collecting stories about the crew. Well, I'm from a noble family like you, we're old money. Made our fortune out in Rasselhog, then repatriated to the Tarin Concordant. That's where I grew up. So that's information about them. Which you can always pause and read if you'd like. I'm not sure if this is the kind of stuff you were hoping to hear, but we can talk about uh, whatever. I'm not shy. Where in the Concordant are you from? So she's from the Tarn Concordant. I grew up on New Va Vandenberg. It's a nice enough place, I suppose. Do you like birds? Why do you ask? Piratey response. Be cagey. Because New Vandenberg is crawling with them. It's basically one big aviary. Something like two-thirds of the native fauna has feathers. Flutters on the wind and splatters his decrement across every available surface. <laughs> oh, you're silly. Naturally, the original colonists adopted the feathery little monsters into the culture, and those of us that came after were kind of stuck with it. Statues, fountain, murals, you name it. Just a giant, feathery, piled, screeching alien birds. If the system had a motto, it'd be squawk. Hey, Pandy, if you're watching... Birds! Ah! I get the picture. I don't know, it doesn't sound all that bad to me. Nah, I'll be cheeky. Try living there. I give you about six months of having your lunch stolen by gull and your head shat on by finches before you change your tune. <laughs> Where'd you learn to pilot a leopard anyway? The Taria Natal Institute on New Vandenberg. Well, among other places, is a big campus. The low gravity training station orbiting Lompoc it was my second home for a time. So, just so you knew, Vandenberg Air Force Base and Lompoc are like places in like uh, kind of the central coast of California. Um, uh, my we my family used to have uh, used to live in Lompoc for a while because of my dad's job. Um, but I, I was before I was born. TNI flight training isn't usually open to civilians, but my parents had good credit back then, and they could name drop Pr Protector Calderon, uh, Protector of the Tarian Concordant, and for the pragmatism and sound judgment, Thomas is excessive. They'll get you pretty far on the Concordant, for a while anyway. The other cadets in my class weren't especially happy sharing air with the city, but they couldn't say much. I was nobility and they weren't. Everyone sort of kept me at arm's length, so I had plenty of time to concentrate on my studies. I got my certification in both dropship and jump ship operation in four years. I even tried working on a commercial jump crew for a while, once upon a time. The people were fun, but it wasn't for me. The ratio of flying to violent jump sickness uh, skewed hard in the wrong direction. <laughs> what can you tell me about Housemeyer? 
You're looking at it. My parents are both gone. Blood cancer and heart disease, respectively. Both treatable, but they were out of money at that point, so into the ground they went. Ditto my brother David, who ran off to serve in the Third Secession War and never came back. That's about the Third Secession War. Hmm. That's a rough break. It is what it is. To be perfectly honest, I was never really all that close to any of them. David was 13 years older than me and had a foot out the door before I turned three. My parents, well, they raised me by proxy in the traditional noble fashion. There was no real bond there, even when I was young. None of this is to say that my folks were bad people. They weren't. They were just doing what they knew. Their upbringings had been outsourced, just like mine was. Anyway, that's all I've got to say about my family. They're gone, I'm here at the end. So, got another question, or should we get back to our duties? Oh, sad group of people. Your family came from Rasselhog? It was a long time ago, but yeah, as my parents told that we were the la landowners on Palme de Terre. It's an agricultural wor world, sort of like the breadbasket of the Draconis Combine. Yes, I know that Palme de Terre means potato. My answer is it can't come from the planet potato. It took some time for me to accept that, but hey, here we are. <laughs> anyway, moving on. House Meyer's holdings were meager. But the value of that land was astronomical. For minor nobility, we were really very wealthy. And then the Third Secession War broke out, and the political rhetoric got ugly. House Meyer didn't want a single part of what was happening, so my ancestors emptied their accounts and ran. As a rule, House Curita takes a very dim view of nobles who cut and run. That'd be the Draconis Combine. Words like traitor and defector started getting thrown around. In the Combine, you really don't want to be on the receiving end of allegations like that. I wouldn't be standing here today if House Calderon hadn't granted my answers asylum in the Concordance. In all likelihood, House Meyer would have been wiped out before I was even born. Talk about something else. Be my guess, what do you need? I've got to get back to it. Talk to you later, Sumir. Commander? Thank you. We'll go talk to Yang and find Thank out his sad on, story. Man. Hey, boss. Welcome to the mech bay. My own little piece of heaven right here on the ship. Something I can help you with? I want an assessment on the leopard. How much trouble are we in? You know, I mean, we're doing okay for the moment, but give it a few months, maybe a year. You know how it goes. Eventually, everything falls apart. Maybe our drive system will give out. Maybe some debris will perforate the hull. Who knows? But on that day, we're going to need to be able to cover our repair costs. And if we can't, well, that'll be that. Tell me a bit about yourself. How'd you wind up with this crew? Uh, Yang M Miharty. This is a long story, boss. Shortest version I can give you. I signed on after serving my turn in the Third Secession War, fighting for the Capellian Confederation. Third Secession War began in 20, 2866, etc. And the Cap Capellian Confederation. For you. If you want to know more, you can ask wh whatever you want. Otherwise, let's get back to the talking shop. And he's fighting for the Capellian. So he's explaining the reason he's in his uh, this situation is because he was in the losing end of a war, of a war, basically. Where are you from originally? Bryant in the Confederation. We may have heard of our claim to fame, the Cro Crowley Lizard Cow. An edible reptile indigenous to the planet Bryant. The meat of the Crowley Lizard Cow is considered a delicacy and is one of Bryant's few planetary exports. No, well, tr trust me, they're delicious. Uh, they're lizard cows. Anyway, as the story goes, Brian was a really nice place place once, a tourist spot, big with haikus and fishing enthusiasts, pale blue skies and European seas, and a booming agricultural business. You know, the works. I never knew it that way, though. Stefan Amaris got it a couple centuries before I was born. Uh, and, well, that was that. As the story goes, Brian used to have these enormous orbital mirrors, storm inhibitors they called them. The Starlight put them in place. Uh, when Amer Ameris took the system in his civil war, he had his troops use them for target practice. Without those mirrors, Brian re reverted to his natural state, a miserable little ball of wind-blown dirt, actively hostile to human life. By the time I came along, the only places where people could live in relative safety were the planet's poles. Of course, you can't fit a planet's entire population into a handful of city at its poles. There's enough space no matter how far down you dig or how tall you build. A lot of people, mostly the poor, died in the early days. There's still a lot of overcrowding in Bryan cities even now. That's my childhood home in a nutshell. Way too many people jammed into it. 
in a tiny claustrophobic space with nowhere to go but off planet. I cleared out of there as fast as I could and never looked back. Gotta admit though, I do miss the taste of lizard cow. Tell me about your time in the military who you served with. The second St. Ives Lancers. A well financed regiment, the Lancers operate around the Capellan Confederation's rumor quarter, fending off pirates and conducting raids into the Free World's League. In 3025, its three battalions are alloc were allocated to the defense of St. Ives, Maladar, and St. Loris. Well, right now, that's where they are. First battalion under Major Ling. We saw more action than most. The arm is a souvenir of my time in the service. I lost the original back in 3010 on St. Loris. Uh, explaining that there was a battle there. You know, when we first arrived at St. Loris, I loved the place. It's an agricultural world, sort of a breadbasket for the neighboring systems. Green fields, rolling hills, you get the picture? We just walked out of the hell on uh, Kittery. Uh, the Fed Rats drove us out in 05. A person living in or whose national origin is the Federated Sons, but it's derogatory. The Fed Rats dro drove us out in 05 in our t with our tails between our legs, so it looked like paradise to us. I remember kicking back in the mech bay, my feet propped up on an engine block, sipping on a snifter of ambergris vermouth. For for Not a bad way to spend a sunny afternoon. You just get boozed up sitting in the mech. Anyway, it turned out the Federated Sons weren't done with us yet. We were barely a month into our de uh, deployment when they sent the SETI Hussars to burn us down. Uh, to replace a light horse style regiment of the Starly Guerra. Combination of mechs and mounting infantry was ideal for conducting swift raids. SRs also encouraged personnel to dine together regardless of rank or branch of service, prompting a high re enlistment rate. I'm sure that there were sound strategic reasons for House Davian to wander St. Loris, but it sure felt personal to me. House Davian controls the Federated Sons. Long story short, one of their scouts managed to slip through our perimeter and hit my mech bay. I was tinkering around in a Centurion's custom-made rumble seat at the time. Uh, being surrounded by all that armor is the only reason I made it out alive. So I didn't make it out unscathed. I lost two of my favorite assistants in my own right arm, and I've got this ugly thing grafted on to me as a reminder. <clears throat> and yet, here I am, doing mercenary work for a living. Some people never learn, huh? Why'd you leave the Capellan Confederation? After my tour of duty was up, you mean? I don't know, it was just time for change. Besides, the place wasn't for me anymore. In a way, it never really was. Oh, we tell long stories while we're out on the seas, etc., etc. I learned a lot from my time in the service. Got a first hand view of the leaves bullshit that saturates Capellan culture, how it rewards highborn idiots at the common people's expense. Speaking as a thoroughly common man, that didn't sit right with me. When my tour was over, I walked away and never looked back. Never really get away from aristocracy. Yang hell, I was born a noble. For what it's worth, I'm glad that you walked away. You brought my, you brought my mech back from the big more than once. In your position, I probably would have done the same. Let's talk about something else. Yeah, let's. This has been a fun trip down memory lane, but I'm sure that we've both got more important things to worry about. I can talk about something else. I am actually done speaking later. To you, Yang. Talk to you later. And then we have one more person we can speak to. We can speak to Darius before we pick up contracts. Always good to see you at Ops, Haida. Can I do something for you? I want to know more about our debt situation. Um, let's do that. I'm checking on the debt. Yeah, sure, that's fair. And I'm glad you're taking an interest. I got time to get into the nuts and bolts of it if you do. What do you want to know? Remind me why we took out so many loans in the first place? How much time have you got? I mean, we've been hit with a thousand expenses since we were forced to flee Chromadir. But I guess you, you're mostly interested in big ticket items. Well, first and foremost, there's the Leopard. We still have a lot of money on this ship, and losing her isn't an option. Then you've got all the assorted fallout from our impromptu trip across the frontier, jump ship passage, docking fees, miscellaneous travel expenses, all paid for on credit, as if we had a choice. There's more that I could get into. The loan we took out to, to set up Markham's family, etc., etc. But that be gilding the lily at this point. The fact is we're in a lot of trouble with a lot of lenders. But hey, we're mercenaries. We live for trouble. Who are we in debt to exa exactly? I want names. How about I give you the top three? First you got Blue Horizon. That's the big commercial bank on Lyrton. They're the ones that own the lease on the ship. Then there's the Injury Consortium. 
They've got people everywhere, but they're based somewhere in Merrick space. Free Worlds League. We borrowed from one of their associates to make the jump away from Cormadir on the uh, on the day of the coup. Finally, we've got Lockdown Lending. They're a frontier outfit from Haster, and they're about as crooked as they come. Now, I wouldn't normally do business with an outfit like the Double L, but we didn't have a choice. They made a deal with Blue Horizon to buy half our debt. So that's the big three. A commercial bank, a shadowy financial consortium, and a bunch of leg breakers and cheap shoots, suits. And each of them is dangerous in its own way. It's enough money talk for now. Let me ask you something else. Be my guest. What do you need? Got some... Got a few minutes to chat. I'd like to catch up. Yeah, sure. I've got time to talk. Before you just started, you work for the... Arano World Guard. Tell me about it. I want to know everything about my team. It was more than just a deployment. It was a full campaign. High Lord Tamati gave us the job back in 19. We were supposed to be assisting the Royal Guard to round up and eliminate a pirate clan on Fajowler. Commander Markham thought it'd be easy money. Turned out that to be anything but. This, uh, yeah. We lost a dozen mech warriors in the three months of the Fjaldir campaign. Had to hose them out of their cockpits. Ugh. Would have been more if it wasn't for Siraju. He saved our people's ass on more than one occasion. Went out of his way to do it. And the thing is, he didn't have to. We weren't under his protection. We were the hired help. A lot of people in Massive's position would have used this cannon fodder. That wasn't his way. He treated us as if we were his own. He was a good man, Haida. As good as they come. Tell me a bit about yourself, Darius. Where are you from? I grew up on Nassau Heights. It's one of the HAB stations orbiting our, our, our true. 30 decks of economic stratification with the corporate suits on the upper decks and everybody else crammed into the lower ones. The old man was a dockhand. He lived on deck 28, two levels up from the bottom with the other station maintenance personnel. 12 hours a day, six days a week, my dad would load and unload cargo shuttles, vacuum sealed quillar and nutrient paste for people like us, and luxury goods for the suits upstairs. The old man must have unloaded a thousand cases of Cassilian eel roe. Plump succulent eggs the size of melon balls. Never got to taste any though. Any one of them, t those tins would have cost him half a year's wages. Anyway, Haida, I don't want to saddle you with my life story. Suffice it to say that I got an eyeful of what I didn't want to be on Nassau Heights, and I did what I had to do to change my circumstances. And by the age of 16, I struck out on my own. I left the station with a handful of skills, an enormous web of contacts, and a rucksack full of that expensive caviar. And once I made it off of Nassau Heights, I never, ever looked back. I gotta run, Darius. I'll see you. I like you, Darius. Alright. Well, let's look at the contract we're gonna take. Next time it won't be so long. Oh, dear. <sighs> the Free Worlds League Asset Retrieval. Our operatives on Bellerophon recovered a functional piece of L LSDF technology. Before they could deliver it to us, they were captured by local government forces. We need a team to stop the location they're being held, recover the technology, and escape. I'm guessing the technology is some broken piece of scrap, but the Free Worlds League is willing to pay to recover it. We go in and get out before they even know what hit him. So we need to go grab um, some thing for the Free World League and then um, leave with the thing. It's going to be the polar region, so we don't need to care about uh, heat. It'll take 12 days to get there. But they're going to pay us to get there. So we can go for money or we can go for salvage or we can get some rep bonus with uh, the Free World League. Systems is faction uh, controls. Well, we get some rep. Need rep to get better jobs. Salvage could be useful though, right now. So could rep. We'll take that. 
It's not great. It might not even cover our costs. Might not even cover our costs. We gotta play it good. Calculating course now, Commander. I think that's going to be about time for that Shadowhawk to be ready. Yeah, yeah, we're low on sea bills. I wish you wouldn't. I wish they wouldn't notify me. I suppose I can do that. I don't suppose I can get them to not do that whenever I'm like in a bad state with the company, just like constantly interrupt me to tell me you're running out of money, you're running out of money. Especially since I spend the early part of the game just always out of money. So I'm going to be out of action still, unfortunately. Probably be a bad time to put in the rookie because this is an important mission. Probably shouldn't have even gotten the rookie, frankly, but until we needed him. So everything should be ready to go. That's gonna be ready to go. Shakedown. You're on the Leopard's Bridge with Samir, Yang, and Darius for the daily staff briefing. Darius says, "Receive three messages from the banks." Lone shark. Lone shark. Samir cuts in. From the people who are financing us. Darius continues, "They are considering rewriting the terms of our loan, so it will be easier to seize this ship if we miss a payment. As usual, they're only doing this because they believe we can't fight it in court." Well, I'm a pirate. Bring it. Ignore the messages. Say we've never missed a payment. They're just probing us to see if we panic. Darius agrees, but says he will watch for the bank actually making changes to the loan contract. With that, the matter is dropped, and the meeting moves on to other topics. Your company has given the following tags: loan status fair. Company credit is currently rated as fair by the banks financing the leopard, which should at least deter them from sending bounty hunters against you. All work orders complete, Commander. The crew is ready for the next job. Yep, everything's good, and we're going to be there tomorrow, so nothing else should be done. Ready to proceed with the current contract? Yes, we are. Proceed. Now we gotta pick. In what order do they actually deploy us in, I wonder? Is it back to front or front to back? It's kind of important. Alright, well, so the the uh Shadow Hawk here. So the biggest guy and kind of is acting as a sniper right now. Weapon revolve ranges of respectable speed and jump capability mass and decent armor. This comes with the cost of selling it nothing in particular. It says about the Shadowhawk. Au contraire, it has an LRM-10 now. Our highest tactics pilot should be should be flying it. Tactics and gunnery pilot. The Vindicator. Damage at range while moving in for closer attacks. Typically well armored, they're capable of some surprise attacks due to their jump capability and above average heat efficiency. That's gonna be Behemoth's mech. Good guts, good piloting. Fair point. Now, this one has piloting and tactics. You should be piloting the spider or the locust. We're gonna do the spider. It has slightly higher tonnage. You can actually, Medusa here can actually pilot the damn thing. 
the Soken Decker. So Decker is going to go into the Spider. The Blackjack's got to go. The Blackjack is going to be piloted by, not the Rookie. Mm. I'd like the Rookie here to actually be able to do something at some point. And the Blackjack's, uh, I don't know if the Blackjack's is safe enough. No, we can serve. I'm sorry, Rookie. We shouldn't have hired you. Not until we actually needed you. And this shall be our squadron. Our lance. For this mission. Yep, I'm definitely going to call it quits. I was saying an hour ago I was going to call it quits. Oh boy. So once we get down to the ground, I'm going to save. Probably should have saved while I was on top, uh, up top side. Um, but mostly, Star League Defense Force technology to escape. But mostly, I just want to get some more safe. So, command of the target location is likely to be well defended. We need to move up, get eyes on the location, neutralize any enemy forces. Once we've se secured the L LSDF tech, the leopard will extract us at this LZ. Best of luck, Commander Oliviera out. Dog tags. We'll go. So what order did they actually deploy in? Okay, so... One, two, three... F one, two, three, four, like that. That's how they deployed. It's not that big a deal, anyhow. Only matters if we end up going in hot, and hopefully we won't be going in hot. Game is saved. And with that... My lovelies, my hearties, this has been Hyena Girl 64 playing Big Stompy Mexico Boom, playing Battletech, and our dread pirate Yeen will triumph in our next episode. Oh, perfect, I'm getting a phone call.